Okay, hi, happy Monday. I've had a number of people asking me a question about my opinion on ayahuasca. So since I keep getting the same question, I thought I'd quickly hop on here and share some perspective on this. So my opinion is based on really two perspectives. One from a Western healthcare perspective, having worked in a very large psychiatric hospital in the north of Scotland many years ago as well as having worked within addiction clinics in the UK and um, then from a Asian healthcare perspective having lived in Asia for the majority of 16 years I've got um, an opinion really from both worlds which is essentially the reason why cellular life wellness exists anyway because it's a, I bridge the two worlds so from a Western, well, first of all, from an Asian perspective, clarity of mind and from a yoga, from a yoga meditation and Asian philosophical perspective, clarity of mind is valued highly. The ability to uh, quiet the body or quiet the mind, connect entirely to your body and from that place gain your own personal insight this is valued highly from an Asian healthcare perspective or from an Asian philosophy, right? So whether we are taking this from the Buddhist religion or Buddhist tradition, it's, uh, Buddhism is not considered a religion, it's considered a tradition or a philosophy. Uh, whether it's from the Buddhists or from the Hindus, from the Taoists, from the Confucianists, there's pretty much agreement that intoxicants have the ability to lead us astray and any insight or any kind of uh, personal information or any thought processes that the mind goes through under the influence of a substance is not necessarily coming from a place of clarity. So the main point of yoga is Chitta Vritti Neroraha, which is essentially stopping the movements of the mind or quietening the movements of the mind. And in order to, once we've quietened the mind and connected fully with ourselves, connected with the body, you are then able to gain personal insight to your own life, really. So there's an understanding that other people don't have your answers. Your answers cannot be taught or gained by somebody else. But teachers from the traditions can teach you how to get your own answers and they are able to share perspective with you in terms of what other great teachers have experienced or what other great leaders of the world, what other great kings uh, from, a Thai, from a Thai perspective, um, what these people have managed to navigate the, the, the challenges of life, right? So from an Asian perspective, life is both joy and suffering. There is an understanding that um, life is difficult for everyone. We should expect it to be difficult. And so when it's difficult, there's no need to be totally overwhelmed by it because there is the basic understanding that life is difficult, life is suffering. But on the flip side of that, there's also the understanding that life is joy. So when we experience joy, we see it for what it is. We're grateful for experiencing the good times, knowing that on the flip side of the good times, there are going to be struggles. All the while, trying to maintain clarity of mind as much as possible. So from an education perspective in, the, in Asia, this is also why children are taught from a very early age how to be in their bodies, how to cope with and self-regulate, how to deal with emotions how to um, not get caught in the stories, not get caught in the contents of, of uh, an event or what is actually going on in life around us, to not get caught up in the whirlwind of the story, but to maintain clarity of mind such that they have self-awareness, they're able to self-regulate and from that place, self-reliance is then built. Uh, specifically self-reliance, not selfishness. This is, it's totally different, right? Um, so for this reason, from an Asian perspective and for myself, I've been a meditator for many years. I've experienced different forms of meditation and uh, I teach everything that I teach at Cellular Life Wellness. I teach from a place of personal experience. Um, I have never used ayahuasca and I never, I never intend to use ayahuasca. My own personal system is 
are very sensitive to food or, or, or any kind of substance. So um, I'm not entirely sure what would happen if I did use ayahuasca. And for this reason, because it's totally unknowable and I have literally no control over um, over the outcome of this, I choose not to use substances that could potentially lead me astray. I value the clarity of my mind. I value my intellect. Um, I value my ability to have full cognitive function. And so for this reason, uh, and I value my nervous system highly, I, uh, I'm not an advocate and I would never use ayahuasca. From a Western perspective, I also have this opinion, having worked in a very large psychiatric hospital many years ago in the north of Scotland, the majority of the people that lived there, the majority of the, of the patients that were there that are unlikely to ever amalgamate back into society without continuous medical care, many of these, most of the patients that were there were young men um, within their 20s to early 30s all of whom who were schizophrenic or had had some form of psychiatric breakdown, some form of psychiatric disconnect due to the use of various recreational drugs. So it wasn't necessarily hard drugs like, you know, crack or heroin that had taken them and essentially caused substantial damage to the psyche. It was things like marijuana, um, ecstasy, just normal, regular street drugs that were easily maintained or, or easily, sorry, obtained at that time, led them astray and um, took them down a path essentially of no return. So from an Asian understanding, when people have a psychiatric disconnect or psychiatric breakdown, shall we say, they refer, this, they refer to it as losing themselves. Right? So they don't, uh, in the West, people will say like they're psychotic or they're crazy or use whatever kind of terms that we describe people who have essentially uh, had a psychiatric breakdown. In Asia, they refer to this as losing themselves in that the psyche and the mind or the, 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 the mind and the body uh, kind of separate. So people are walking in the streets and they don't actually know what they're doing. They're saying things and they don't have any awareness of what they're doing. They basically have lost their way, they've lost themselves, they're no longer connected to their body. And um, I've seen this a number of times with young men, it was mostly young men, I think, mostly probably because the use of, of uh, drugs in Scotland at that time was dominantly used by males, by young men. Um, and so yes, it really was a situation of kind of seeing human bodies that were essentially just shells. Like there was no, um, there was no cognitive function. There was no emotion. There was no awareness of, of what we know as reality in our in our normal day to day existence. These young men had totally lost their way, and it was triggered by the use of some form of drug. Now I do realize that ayahuasca is natural and so for a lot of people they're saying you know it's a natural drug and so for them in that case it, it is safe. I personally disagree with this. There have been a number of cases of people dying in South America and in various places in the world because of the use of ayahuasca. So um, just because it's natural, it doesn't mean that it's safe. You still don't know how your psyche is going to respond and you still don't know this, the mental state or the emotional state of the person that is actually giving you the substance to begin with. So mistakes can easily be made. Our bodies at the end of the day, for as far as I'm concerned, human life and our bodies are the most important gift that we have, be, have been given and your psyche, your mental state is essentially sacred. So I do realize that there's a bit of a push going on at the moment or there's a lot of people advocating for the use of this and personally I disagree mostly because um, at the end of the day even uh, a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs that people have very strong opinions of and for myself having come having worked within the pharmaceutical industry having worked within western healthcare i still have you know i have strong opinions on the use of certain western drugs as well but 
at the end of the day, the majority of these drugs originated from natural substances that were then in some way um, shaped or formed or combined with something else in order to give us the compounds that we have now. And we're seeing addictive behavior with opioids. We're seeing um, the drug abuse of, of pharmaceutical drugs, whether, whether they're prescribed or whether they are stolen and, and sold on the streets. For me, there really is no difference between the addictive behavior of um, whether it's alcohol, whether it's pharmaceutical prescribed drugs, whether it's on the street drugs, or whether it's a natural substance like ayahuasca, or, or even in terms of addiction, codependent relationships. It just becomes yet another dragon that um, people start to chase and their personal insight is not gained from this place of escapism. Um, all that ends up happening is that people tend to, like I said, chase the dragon or they end up in situations where um, they are in hospital sedated because of psychiatric episodes, which I've also seen. So um, I do have a very strong opinion on this. At the end of the day, I realize that it's, you know, personal choice and my opinion is definitely not, I don't, um, I, I don't intend to come across as judgmental. I do realize that at the end of the day, we all have free will and we all have personal choice. And I also realize that some people do claim to have found answers or found peace or, you know, found they found what they were essentially looking for through the use of ayahuasca. And I fully respect this. However, the question mark that I always just put on to it is, are you able to... I just to finish that, um, what I was going to say is, are you able to access the same kind of uh, place of stillness without the use of any kind of external substance, um, which is possible from the perspective of inside meditation? So from, from a yoga perspective and from a meditation perspective, it is possible to gain your own personal insight and to um, find your own answers and get your own peace and, and get your own clarity without the use of any kind of substance and, uh, and therefore essentially not putting yourself at any risk of addictive behavior, which again and again from an ayahuasca perspective, I'm seeing people need to go on more than one ayahuasca trip. It just becomes yet another kind of, um, it's an, uh, as I keep saying, it's just another dragon. Where is the benefit of learning how to do personal insight meditation and how to, you know, how to connect and use, use your body in order to quieten your mind, you're able to get clarity of mind and personal insight and your own guidance without getting lost in, um, any form of substance. So that's my perspective on that. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email at info at sallyalife.com. You can find me on social media on my Facebook page at Sally Alive Wellness. Um, and the website is sallyalife.com. S-A-L-I-Y-A-L-I-F-E.com. Have a lovely day. Bye.